Good evening and welcome everyone to round 13 of the Hardy's National Series here at Nashville Super Speedway. We're here for a hot summer night of racing. Alex Benyako is on the pole. What more could you want from tonight? There's a PJ1 on the racing surface for the inside line tonight because of the outside being extremely grippy and the inside line being very slippery from weather over the past week or so. Um, but these guys are ready to give you guys a show out here tonight, and uh, we'll see what happens. The pace car is off here at Nashville, and Alex Benyako is about to get ready to take us to the green flag. The green flag is waving, and we're racing here at Nashville Super Speedway. So far, Benyako got the pretty good jump over Williams, but Bisheglia is right behind him. Same with Bradley Bishop Jr., the Mopar Dodge. And it looks like the 17's already looking low on Alex Benyako. Making early moves here on lap one. Kyle Bisheglia takes the lead into turn three. It's that PJ1 down there that's working wonders for the 17 car. Bradley Bishop Jr. is just going to follow with the 05 also following suit on that inside line. Considering this is a big track, Traff is actually going to play an effect here, but not as much as it would at some other tracks. But uh, Kyle Bisheglia is leading over Bradley Bishop Jr. and Alex Bignaco now as he falls back to third. Corey Williams on the outside line back there in the Mobile One Chevy going down the inside of Alex Bignaco. Man, there's supposed to be some great racing here tonight because of that PJ1 strip that they put down there. Lap number three, Bradley Bishop Jr. is all over the back of Kyle Bisheglia. I think he might get it sometime soon here, but that car is really fast tonight. And there he goes, down the inside. Bradley Bishop Jr. is going for the lead using the PJ1 strip to his advantage. Kyle Bisheglia fighting as hard as he can on the outside, but I don't think he can do it with that Mopar power under the 44's hood. The 44 is going to get it going into turn one, and he's going to clear him by a long mile. He just left them back in another county right there. And Bradley Bishop Jr. is now leading at Nashville. Tim Fiegel is starting to make his way through the pack with Brandon Crosta and the Roush family racing Ford Mustang following right behind him. And Crosta looks like he's got some really good speed tonight as he goes down the inside of Fiegel. But I don't think he's going to get it this time. I think he made a move too early. But that 09 is looking really, really, really fast tonight. Keep an eye out for him. Taking a little note here, um, Dylan Schwallenberg, the 2017 Hardy's National Series champion, is back for United Emirates Racing on a part-time schedule uh, as he's passing his old team, Curtis Racing, there. Um, but they're back on a part-time schedule. Uh, there were some very open races, and Rockstar wanted Dylan to get in the number 94 and pilot this thing and help that team out. Uh, United Emirates Racing, of course, is in a partnership with Yamp and they get a bunch of resources from them so this is really to help out their program and i think having this champion behind the wheel is really going to help as he's climbing up through the field right now i don't think anyone is going to catch these two guys tonight i mean just <laughs> look at this gap to everybody else it's absolutely ridiculous uh you know bradley bishop jr is just in another another zip code and then Kyle Bisheglia is trying his best to keep up with him, but I don't think it's working because he's been in a steady four to three tenths every lap. And then uh, you just have everyone else back here with Tim Fiegel, who's made his way up. Brandon Crasta, who's basically followed Fiegel all the way up through the field. Corey Williams, Hannah Allen, and let's give a call to Edward Ziemba here. Uh, he's on a part-time basis for Rodriguez Racing. And he's done really good in his starts. So let's give a call to Edward Ziemba. He's running around 8th to 7th right now. Tim Fiegel is making steady moves all the way up to 3rd place with Brandon Krasta following suit. Then Edward Ziemba behind Krasta. Fiegel has basically just been leading this train of 2 or 3 cars the whole entire race. I don't know what it is, but the 09 is just stuck to the back of that 43 no matter where he goes. And Fiegel's teammate is up here just absolutely dominating. So maybe they have similar cars and setups. 
and Fiegel can get up there and challenge for the win tonight. While uh, Krasta and Ziemba are just following suit, uh, using that draft to their advantage and using the PJ1 grip to their advantage as Ziemba go tries to go down the inside of Krasta, but I don't think it's working too well. He's just going to lose grip going into the corner and then Krasta's just going to pull away as Bradley Bishop Jr. is just absolutely stomping the field right now. Give a call to this team and this driver, really, for turning themselves around this year. Bradley Bishop Jr. kind of struggled in his first two years in the Hardys National Series, but it seems that he's finally found his big break and he's showing off his true potential. As I just finished talking about how the 09 would not get off the 43's rear bumper, he said he was tired of looking at that petty blue, and he's going down the inside of Tim Fiegel. But is it going to stick? I think it will, as long as he just gets a really good run into turn one here. Uh, Kras is just trying so hard. I don't think he can do it. He he cleared him. Kras is now in third place. He's going to try to make a challenge to these guys up there, but I don't think he will. Ziemba also passes Fiegel. Fiegel's slow in here. I don't know what's going on. Tim Fiegel just seems to be slowing down more and more every single corner. I don't know if it's a tire issue or if it's anything else in that car, but that car is really, really slow compared to how it was running earlier. I don't think this is a good sign for the Dodges or Tim Fiegel in general because he's just getting past left and right. And he's slowing. He's slowing way down. I don't know if he's out of gas or if there's a tire down or something, but there's just no power in that car from what it sounds like. I don't know if FBRL officials are going to throw the caution for this, but he might be stopping on the track. He's going up to the wall. And Tim Fiegel has lost all power. He stopped on the outside line. And I believe that will be our first caution of the night. Riding on board with Fiegel, you can hear the moment the power just drops on the engine. Um, and he just has nowhere to go because there's so many cars on the track that he can't get down to the inside of the apron. So he had really no choice with a car with no power other than to stop it on the wall. I think that was the safest thing he could have done rather than pulling out in front of somebody and ruining their race and potentially injuring the both of them. But Tim Fiegel, he is now out of the race. Bradley Bishop Jr. leads them to the green after pit stops as they fix Tim Fiegel's Dodge. And we're green back here again at Nashville Super Speedway. But they fixed the 43 Dodge. I'm guessing it was just a battery issue. Uh, but yeah, Bradley Bishop. And then Edward Ziemba in second with William Brock in third. Give a call to this guy. And Kyle Bisheglia is going to try to make a move down his inside. Oh, and he tags William Brock. He tags Brock, and Brock comes back up the track. Oh my gosh. I don't know how they didn't just completely destroy everyone there. There's the 71 in the wall. That's a tough break for that 71 Zest 4 right there. I don't know. I don't know how that crash wasn't bigger than it was, but let's get another look at it. Just looks like a general case of someone having a bigger run than they thought they had and then getting too close to someone's rear bumper right there that was just this could have been so much worse William Brock did a great job of hanging on to that car Jeffrey White did a great job of avoiding this crash that could have been way bigger um, I really don't know what James Shelley was doing right there but he tags the number seven and then shoots him and Bisheglia up into the wall. Bisheglia takes a hard hit into the wall. I'm surprised he kept going after this. And then Shelly just had nothing to do other than sit in the wall to not merge back into traffic and destroy everybody. Man, two really, really big hit or three really, really big hits into the outside wall here at Nashville. Let's get back to the green flag coverage. Lap 29, Bradley Bishop Jr. at right after the restart is already pulled away it seems that really only two cars can break away here as Edward Ziemba doing an absolutely phenomenal job in that number 60 Toyota 
He's full-time in the Napa Pro Series, but he's looking to move up. So someone needs to hire this kid full-time because this is an incredible drive. And he's running down Bradley Bishop Jr. right now as he no one's been able to touch this guy all day. Maybe Edward Ziemba can take a challenge to him down the inside. Oh, uh, he just made his move way too early right there. But Bradley Bishop Jr. under pressure from Edward Ziemba here on lap 30. Look at this battle here between Ian Dutta, Dylan Schwallenberg, and Corey Williams. Ian Dutta coming back all of a sudden uh, out of Sony Cup Series retirement. He's coming back, and he's actually been doing really well in all of his starts for every team he's raced for. So uh, you have a call to the experience at veteran Ian Dutta, of course. You know, I think he has a few wins in the Sony Cup Series. So, of course, he's expected to perform, but not at the level that he's been performing at. This is been outstanding the way he's been racing here lately while we weren't looking Edward Ziemba stole the lead from Bradley Bishop Jr. and used his teammate Tim Fiegel as a pick and Ziemba's trying to run away with it right now but Fiegel looks like he's running Ziemba down for the lead but give a call to this young rookie man this is absolutely incredible driving out of him and Hopefully Tim Fiegel doesn't get in the way of this battle because that would just be extremely unfortunate. Checking back in on Kyle Bisheglia. He is not doing too well right now. This damage is affecting him so much. He's essentially in last right now. And I don't think there's any chance of them fixing this car up to get back to being competitive. Because uh, the amount of aero damage on the back end you see there. But what a tough break for the 17 because he was doing so well tonight and this is just not the night they needed right now Fiegel is caught back up to Edward Ziemba bringing his teammate Bradley Bishop Jr. with him this race really lies within the hands of Tim Fiegel right now because if he passes Ziemba Bishop Jr. can get on by but if he holds up Bishop Jr. up too much then Bishop could lose the race so essentially this race lies between this 43 44 in the 60 right now. Sean Angel's just lurking back here, hoping for these three to make a mistake. But hopefully, um, the 43 doesn't ruin the chances for either of these guys here tonight. Scott Roush in the number three loves Camaro has gotten by Sean Angel here for third place. This could be a big move for Scott Roush because. In clean air, you could probably run those two or those three guys up there down because of how much Tim Fiegel's holding up the 44 here. It looks like the same gap that it has been, but it's been a couple laps, and that 43 has literally been controlling the gap of Bishop Jr. to Ziemba. He'll back off for like two laps and then get back on the gas for some reason. Like, see, see what he's doing now? It's just. It's weird. It looks like he's holding up Bishop Jr. Bishop really needs to get by his teammate. Um, and I think he's trying to do that right now. Because he's starting to peek his nose out. Uh, I don't think he's in the position to make a move yet. Because that 43 is still quick. The 44. Bradley Bishop Jr. is finally getting by his teammate. His teammate was pretty much controlling the gap for this lead between Ziemba and Bishop for like three laps because he was backing off the gas and all this stuff and just slowing down the 44 but he's finally going to be able to get by him I believe uh I I feel for Bishop Jr. right now this must be a pain I don't I don't want to be in that team meeting Monday morning but at least he got by him now and he's going to try to run down that 60 Toyota of Edward Ziemba Let's give a shout out to Cole Baker here in his first start in the Hardy's National Series, I believe. Um, driving for Diego Yepes. Uh, I think he just passed an affiliate car with that 22 there, so he's doing a great job. He's running around 22nd place. And this is just a great debut for this kid. Shout out to Cole Baker. Julio Caesar putting on a great race tonight in that number 20 Napa Toyota going down the inside of Hannah Allen for sixth place and he's done a great job tonight he's just constantly been up near the top 15 to the top 10 but he's finally trying to break into that top five breaking away from the pack behind him trying to get up to the um, number eight the three and the six up there 
as they've been, these guys have been battling for like five laps. As <laughs> here goes Scott Roush down the inside as I'm just talking about them battling for a long, long time. Uh, Sean Angel's having a great race tonight, by the way, too. I don't know if I mentioned that yet, but. Scott Roush down the inside of him right now with his CM Racing teammate Alex Benyako following right behind him in his draft. And that inside line's working wonders for these two CM Racing cars right now. Sean Angel is trying his hardest to fight on the outside, but it's just not going to work as Alex Benyako and Scott Roush get by Sean Angel. This gap really is not closed for this lead since the 44 past the 43. CM has actually pulled away a little bit more here. But maybe Bishop Jr. saving his tires as Zam is going out and running his heart out. But he's stuck behind Kyle Bisheglia. This might affect his gap really big. And then the 38 Caleb Ford up there might hold him up here. Hopefully they'll let him buy safe. As, yeah, there he goes. He gets by the lap cars. Bradley Bishop Jr. is going to have to deal with these guys now. Man, these lap cars have been a nuisance every week in the FBRL for the leaders. The 44 stuck behind Kyle Bishigley. He's pushing him through the corner right there. I don't know how he didn't just spin him out. And there he goes down the inside. The 44 Bradley Bishop Jr. finally clears the lap cars. This one's following suit. Tim Fiegel, I don't know. This could have been a great night for him. He would be third place if he was on the lead lap right now. This is just a shame. But at least he's getting to run at the front. And at least he's, you know, still running in the race. I think we're about to come near some green flag pit stops because a bunch of lap cars just pitted. And yeah, here comes Ziemba actually down, coming into pit road. It's really ironic that I just talked about that. But the leader, Edward Ziemba, down pit road. Following suit is Alex Benyako, Scott Roush, Sean Angel, Hannah Allen. And a bunch of these slower cars are also on pit road. But maybe my theory of uh, Bradley Bishop Jr. saving his stuff was correct because he's staying out right now. And Tim Fiegel's following him. I think... Oh, never mind. He didn't save that much more then. Uh, but I believe Tim Fiegel, I think they're just using as their little strategy pick. But uh, Bradley Bishop Jr. and I believe the rest of the field are coming down. Edward Ziemba might just have a winning strategy here as he has blown Bradley Bishop Jr. away after this pit stop. I think Sean Angel's in second now. Yeah, Sean Angel's in second. Bradley Bishop Jr.'s all the way back here. Four seconds behind Edward Ziemba, but he does have that one lap newer tires. And that could play into effect with this strategy a little bit because tires matter so much as Julio Caesar going down the inside. And there's a caution! The Zero had been blowing up for almost a whole lap and for some reason decided to get back up onto the track and dump oil onto it. And then these poor guys behind her just to, like... They didn't have anywhere to go because of the oil on the track. There's this, this big wreck came from it. Uh, I think, like, a bunch of cars piled into this. Unfortunately, Cole Baker did. Uh, he was having a great run tonight. James Silverfox gets by. Uh, but there should be more guys piling into this wreck here. Uh, yeah, there's the 80. Uh, the 22 just barely gets by it. Uh, this is just the... Extremely strange wreck is a uh, oh my god. I think Coven black just barely hits him here as he stopped in a really weird area The 98 gets clipped the 30 36 gets clipped as he finally gets off of the track and Luckily the leaders weren't damaged from any of this but that was a massive massive wreck resulting in a lot of DNFs It was just very very strange wreck This restart is about to be a complete mess a bunch of lap cars up here. For some reason, Ziemba got black flagged under caution. And he's all the way at the back. And now Sean Angel is your leader, not James Shelley. James Shelley is 29th, just barely hanging on to that lead lap. But the green flag is out here at Nashville. Sean Angel is leading the way. And he gets with a he gets by with a clean restart here. As Oh my gosh, Kyle Bisheglia and everyone else is just holding up the rest of the field here. This could be a great opportunity for some slower mid-pack cars to get up into this top 10 here. But uh, as the lead stands, Bradley Bishop Jr. Still incredibly fast trying to get by Sean Angel here. 
Sean Angel going to try to get redemption for Rodriguez Racing, considering the 60 was probably their fastest car tonight, and he got a black flag, or he had some mechanical issues, because he's running way off the pace back here. So it might have been an engine issue under caution for the number 60 of Edward Ziemba, but... Uh, leading right now is his teammate Sean Angel, Bradley Bishop Jr. trying to run him down. Julio Caesar right there in third place. That's another Rodriguez racing car, I believe. Bradley Bishop Jr. is just hounding Sean Angel. I believe he's going to get the lead here at any moment, considering he's so fast. But I think he's making moves in the wrong places right now. Seems like his best corners is three and four because he always gets a run off of them but he can't really do anything with it because the run dies down the straightaway but he's incredibly quick and he can get the lead here at any moment if Julio Caesar doesn't start interfering with this battle that would be a great uh, upset winner tonight in general because this race has been dominated by like three people so if Julio, if Julio Caesar can pull this off then that would be an incredible incredible accomplishment Bradley Bishop Jr. has been hounding Sean Angel for last, but I th think he's finally going to get him here. Oh, he uses the bumper on Sean Angel to move him out of the way, and Bradley Bishop Jr. is going to try to take the lead here down the back straightaway. He's not clear yet. They're still side by side. Oh, he's just so good in three and four. I don't think anyone could stand a chance with that one, but Sean Angel loses the lead. Now he's battling side by side with his teammate Julio Caesar, while Bradley Bishop Jr., this might be his best chance to just pull away and win as there's a lap car up here of uh, Alexander Rowe. But um, Bradley Bishop Jr. pulling away so much already from Julio Caesar, Sean Angel, and Tim Fiegel, and he already gets around Alexander Rowe. Rowe's going to hold up these guys and bring this main pack back into them. This might be Bradley Bishop Jr.'s race to lose at this point, unless we get a late race caution. Well, even that, I think, would end the race at this rate, so... Julio Caesar better start putting the pedal to the metal if he wants to win this race. Coming to two laps to go, Bradley Bishop Jr. has got this race completely won. If, as long as he just doesn't make any mistakes or no engine failures come into play. This will be his, I believe, second win on the season. Julio Caesar running great back here in second. Uh, Corey Williams in third. He's having an incredible season. Ian Dutta coming up here passing Jack Porkins. Jack Porkins with a great run. Marchese going down the inside. Sean Angel back here. Heartbreak for him. Max Ludger trying to go down the inside of James Shelley here. The number 90 of Paul Jackson, I believe. Uh, and then there's J.J. Roberts and Dylan Schwallenberg here. Well, Jeffrey White's right behind him, but Dylan Schwallenberg is in 11th place. Give a call to the 2017 champion in this comeback race as the white flag is out. Bradley Bishop Jr. is leading the way as there's pit stops going on. But Bradley Bishop Jr. is leading the way here. Coming down turns three and four as Tim Fiegel gets by Julio Caesar, but that's not going to matter. Bradley Bishop Jr. coming down the front straightaway. Bradley Bishop is going to win at Nashville Super Speedway. That was a great race there. There was a lot of action all over the track. A lot of drama. A lot of, not really a lot of wrecks, but more than enough to ask for. As Bradley Bishop Jr., he's going to proudly do his burnout, and we'll get you to the race results.